So welcome back to another video and today we're going to be reviewing this brand new Worcester Bosch 1000 combi boiler. Now this is an entry level product, it's just been released for 2023 by Worcester and we're going to tell you all about its specifications, its features, we're going to review its components and we'll make a recommendation at the end of the video whether or not you should buy this for your home. So as we previously mentioned on the Valen Ecotech Plus video review, we haven't been doing many reviews of gas boilers and that's because for a period of time there hasn't been many new combustion boiler models coming to market. However, recently this is all changing. Manufacturers are putting lots of R&D into these products to make them even more efficient. And how is this going to affect the future of the UK heating market? We'd love to hear your thoughts and leave a comment below. Okay, so we've got the boiler out of the box, we've put it on the table and here it is. This is the Worcester Bosch 1000. Now, looking at it like this, it pretty much looks like any other boiler. It's a boring white box. However, it does have some of Worcester's design language built into it. So, from the outset, we've got the same sort of screen that you'd get on the Worcester Bosch 2000, the 4000 and the 8000. We'll come back to those models shortly and give you a bit of overview of the range. It's got this sort of high gloss case and it's a square edge design. Now, personally for me, it does look a little bit cheaper. It doesn't look as sort of uh, attractive, if you want to say, as a Worcester Bosch 4000, but it is serving a different market. Now, size wise for this product, it's actually quite compact. It's only 395 millimeters wide. I'm looking at there, it's 285 millimeters deep and it's 655 millimeters tall, so it'll pretty much fit in any kitchen cupboard. However, what's different about this product compared to something like a 4000, well, you can't rear pipe it. So what that means is the pipes have to come from the bottom of the boiler. If they come from the top on a 4000, there's a little cavity that goes down the back of the boiler, which means it doesn't affect the overall depth of the product. But on this boiler, you need to buy an accessory. And that accessory will extend the width or increase the, sorry, increase the depth of the boiler by about 50 millimeters. So if you're thinking about putting this in cupboard and you've got pipes behind your boiler, then you need to consider an extra 50 millimeter, but also some additional cost. And maybe that's a reason to buy a Worcester Bosch 4000. So we've covered the dimensions. Now let's take a look at these controls and see what you can do on the front of this boiler. Well, first of all, like most modern combi boilers, you can control the central heating temperature and the hot water temperature separately. On some older combis, you couldn't do that, but on this boiler, you can. And you do that by pressing these buttons here, up and down, and there's an OK button to confirm it. The other menus within the boiler really are for the engineer to commission the product. And given that all boilers that are sold in the UK now need to be supplied and installed with something called a Boiler Plus controller, you probably won't ever control the boiler from here other than to change the actual temperature of the hot water. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look inside this product and we're gonna look at all the components and let's see how they differ from something like a premium Worcester Bosch 4000. Okay, let's take a look at some of the components in this boiler and how it differs from the rest of the Worcester range. Well, the first thing that's standing out straight away isn't the fact it says Bosch and not Worcester, it's the fact that this product here, this component is stainless steel. Now, why is that different compared to anything else that Worcester do? Well, Worcester pride themselves on their alloy aluminium heat exchangers. Now, what these give is they give big waterways and they give pretty fast heat up times but they're not as durable as stainless steel in theory. Um, however, with this product here, Worcester have opted for a stainless steel heat exchanger. So works really well in a hard water area and will probably outlive any other component within this boiler. So for the price point, that's pretty attractive feature of this product to get your hands on a stainless steel heat exchanger. So what else have we got inside the boiler? Well, apart from this lovely stainless steel heat exchanger, you've got all the usual gubbins you would see inside a boiler. So we've got a gas valve. This is quite a premium product. It's made by Honeywell or Resido as they're now known. We've got a pump. 
Now Worcester have two different pumps in their boilers, obviously going on with from COVID, there were some supply chain issues with boilers. So what Worcester did to make sure they had continuity of supply is they split the components across their ranges. So you may get a Grunfoss pump or you may get this pump here, which I don't know the name of, but it's got a Q on the front. Apparently they're exactly the same specification. They're both an ERP rated pump, so an energy rated pump. It's just you'll depend on the box you buy. You'll either have a Grunfoss or you'll have this Q1. Are there any performance differences? I suppose we'll only find out in the long-term durability of the product. Apart from that, we've got a fan. This is an Empfast fan. So we see this fan on pretty much every boiler on the market. It's in Wiesmann's, it's in Worcester's, and obviously it's also in this 1000 range. We've got a plate heat exchanger, pretty standard component. And the difference with this product and something that Worcester are priding themselves on this is the ease of maintenance and that sort of goes along with the ethos of the product. It's a very affordable product in terms of the actual cost to purchase the boiler and the way it's been designed, it's been designed to be maintained at the lowest possible price point. How have they done that? What they've done is they've made everything super accessible. There's no screws to even to remove the condent strap, it just pulls out. You can get to the PRV. That was a notorious component on Worcesters. It was always really difficult to get to. It's very easy to get to on this boiler. Top up the pressure on the expansion, super easy. And you don't even need to take the sides off to service the product. And that's a good job you don't need to because you can't. They've actually riveted the sides on. Maybe that'll annoy some engineers. However, can't really see it because you can get to everything from the front of this boiler. As we mentioned at the start of the video, this is a combi boiler. Now, as far as we're aware, the Worcester Bosch 1000 range is only available as a combi boiler. You can't buy it as a system or a regular. If I've got that wrong, leave a comment below and we'll update this video, uh, or we probably won't actually, but just leave a comment. Um, now, combi boiler, it comes in two power outputs. So the entry level model is a 24 kilowatt model, and then the top of the range 1000 is a 30 kilowatt combi. Now what that means is you'll get about 24 kilowatts of heat output for your central heating on both of these options. The difference between the two is the hot water performance. So on the entry level 25, 24 kilowatt model, you'll get around 9.8 liters of hot water per minute. And if you upgrade to the 30, then it's going to give you about 12 liters of hot water. So there's an overall summary of this product with some technical details thrown into boot. Now, the real decision for a homeowner is what Worcester product should I buy? Well, this product comes in at a pretty attractive price point and what it's going to give you access to is Worcester Bosch's five-star aftercare service. So if you found yourself in a breakdown situation, Worcester Bosch are pretty much the best on the market for getting out there in no time at all and getting your boiler back up and working. However, there is a limitation to the warranty on this product compared to something like the Worcester Bosch 4000, and that would be the duration of the warranty. So generally people don't like buying boilers. It's not a nice thing to do. It feels like a waste of money, but it feels like good value for money when you're having a nice hot shower and you want that peace of mind for as long as possible. With this 1000 model, Worcester are gonna support you with a five year product guarantee but with the 4000 that's going to double to 10 years and if you think about the cost difference between buying this boiler and the 4000 and what it would cost to take out a five star standard breakdown cover for an extra five years this boiler wouldn't pay for itself in that scenario, the 4000 does. The only real advantage of buying this product over a 4000 is you're gonna get access to premium technology at a lower price point. However, in the grand scheme of things, me personally, I think it's make, worth making the additional investment and buying the 4000 model. So we hope that was a useful video in giving you some further information about this Worcester Bosch 1000. Now, although we're gonna recommend a 4000 over this product, we are still gonna list this on the website. So if you do wanna buy this boiler, you wanna get your hands on it, you want Worcester Bosch's five-star aftercare and you want Heatable's five-star installation and price point, then head over to heatable.co.uk and we'll be able to give you a fixed price to have this boiler installed as quick as tomorrow. 
Now, if you like these videos or you like commenting and being mean, then please don't forget to like and subscribe to the Heatable YouTube channel because we've got lots of content on boilers, new models, reviews, but we've also got the solar element of the business and that's super interesting as we work towards net zero.